Good afternoon, good evening, good morning. This is the Wix online meeting 186, Ides of April. That's not a thing, is it? I don't think that's a thing. Anyway, Ides of April. We're recording this meeting like we always do for those of you that aren't with us right here, right now. Uh, we have a little bit of triage to do. And when I say a little bit, I do mean very, very little. And then Sean brought up a couple topics he wanted to talk about, um, things that I've grouped as lesser tools. Uh, we'll talk about who those are, and then documentation, which I broke out separately, and he put it all together, because they're all basically the set of projects in Wix 4 that do not have an active home in the work that we've been doing, because we've been focused on the core scenarios as opposed to these lesser tools and documentation. Um, not to say that they are lesser, but um, they're lesser. So uh, before we go talk about those other things, let's go jump into triage. Bob, you ready? I am. All right. Uh, as I said, we have one exciting thing to talk about. <sighs> and it just could be quite exciting. Um, someone is saying that Votive is not working in Visual Studio now. And the interesting point is that it's 16.5. And then I realized, then I went back and said, well, I don't know. It's still working for me. I realized that my Visual Studio is still 16.4 which means that I haven't taken an update, which means that there hasn't been a two-week span of no updates from Visual Studio since 16.5 started. And I was like, really? Because I'm pretty careful. Essentially, I figure that give them two weeks, and if they don't do an update in two weeks, then it's probably stable. And I went back and looked, and lo and behold, they've done an update every week for the last four weeks uh, since 16.5 came out. And they're not little updates. They're like, yeah, we fixed all this stuff. And some of the stuff is like, we fixed the C++ compiler generating bad code. And I'm just like, uh, I don't want any part of that. And now we find out that possibly, I haven't verified it myself, but there's at least two people out there saying that Votive doesn't work in this. And Visual Studio is saying that um, it's our problem, that there's something wrong in Votive that is why it doesn't work in 16.5. Except um, it does. It works for me in 16.5.3, which is... Oh, after that current. huge soliloquy, you come Sorry, back and I, just... I, I didn't, know that, I didn't know that was the purpose of the monologue. If, if oh, I'd known, I'd, I'd have interrupted. I built up um, this whole story to say that this is going to turn to be a Visual Studio issue, but yeah, it's yeah. not clearly our issue. Um, so maybe it is 16.5.3 uh, has fixed the issue? Because these oh. guys... Say 16.5.2 well, did not work for him. Yeah, and of course 16.5.4 just came out. Yes. So <laughs> there you go. All right. And I, I will not do that update while we're in the meeting. No, 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 no. So net, net, I'm, I'm one. Visual Studio is having issues. Um, I release every week after a minor release, including a minor release that breaks extensions that. Have been working forever. It's not a That's good an assumption. For a very long time, Votive has been working. Um, I know it worked in '64. Sorry, I, I'm I'm suggesting that that it's it's not necessarily related to Visual Studio. Not far be it from me to give the benefit of the, of the doubt to, <laughs> to that team that we have both worked for. Uh -huh. um, but it's it's not clear to me that that's the thing Be because it's. It's um, it's saying incompatible, uh, which, which, and, and and you know, as you can see, I noted on the ticket that you know, well, try to reload it, and Visual Studio will tell you something. Maybe not, you know, exactly what you want, but it will tell you something, and they're saying it doesn't. Well, I'm like, eh, that's that's not consistent with with my experiences, um, but you know, it's kind of like. You know, it works on my machine. What else do you want me to say? I don't. I don't know how to to go about diagnosing this. Um, I, I did have one thing I was going to um, add to the ticket, which is to um, start fresh. If you know, one, our template's present, which is a good you know health indicator, mm -hmm. and two, if you create a new project, does it you know does can does it appear, and then can you close Visual Studio and then reopen the the solution? Yeah. Yep. Yep. So. But that's kind of my the yep. the limit of of my debugability contribution here. Right. I think we should uh, kick this down the road for two weeks with that sort of thing and come back 
sure. um, and revisit it and see if Visual Studio is still bouncing every week. Um, <laughs> I hope for their sake that it's not, because uh, this is not a fun place to be in. I've, I've been on the unfortunate case where we did have a bug in Fire Giant where we did bounce a customer a couple times, or it was just like we could not get this one thing fixed. It was a couple things, and you're just like, oh, I just wish it would be stable. <laughs> Feel a little yeah, bad well, about that. Also, this week was Patch Tuesday, so you know, Visual <laughs> Studio tends to uh, have releases for Patch Tuesday. Yeah, which uh, which they are the kitchen sink, so I don't envy them on that I front either. Sure, um, sure. And and I do not mean to be sound like I'm berating him. I'm just saying that they are big. They are not having a good time right now with the way that they're doing releases. And I think we should just hang out and come back again in two weeks and see how things are doing for them. If there have been two more releases in those two weeks, um, I may say the same thing, um, but I'm hoping that they're getting to the end. Although, to be fair, if this had been two weeks ago and they had already released .0, .1, and .2 in that time frame, I might have been like, oh, well, let's give it two weeks and hopefully they're in a better place. Um, and then they would have a three and a four. So here's hoping for no five and six, and everything is good now. <laughs> I, I, I don't have much else to say. So, all right, uh, why don't you add what you're planning to add, Bob? Um, yep. Adding your nugget that. about 16.5.3, and then seeing if this comes around, and we will revisit in a couple weeks, see if they come back with any more information. Yep. All right, all right. Uh, excitement. <sighs> excitement. All right. So Sean asked the very good question um, as he's been working his way through VIX4 uh, things, lots around the extensions and stuff like that, which is fantastic because they have been um, neglected by me and some Bob while we've been focused on the core scenarios, which means that sometimes we've been breaking extensions and not keeping up to date, which is not good. But thank you, Sean, for running around and finding lots of gaps. Uh, but the bigger question that we uh, mentioned a long, long time ago and tabled, um, because we weren't really prepared to talk about them, um, and I'm not sure we're prepared to talk about them quite yet, but we are definitely getting to a point where we need to, is what do we do with these, these other tools in Wix? Um, in particular, heat, melt, retina, and smoke. Um, one of the big questions is, do we keep them all? And I mention that because I already removed the tool <laughs> from this list saying that we won't bother keeping it. It's a tool that I wrote that was just kind of a, an attempt at doing something. It never went anywhere, and it doesn't work fantastically well even now. So I don't think we're going to keep it. That tool is Shine. You can go look at the code if you want. Um, it's cute, but it's not quite real. Um, so um, these other four... Do we keep them? If we do, where do we put them? And the last question that I threw on as I was thinking about this is, perhaps some of them, I'm particularly thinking of smoke, should just become commands on Wix.exe. So the tool itself goes away and gets rolled in to Wix.exe functionality the way that candle and light have gone away and have gotten rolled into Wix.exe. So. Well, I found myself wanting to use heat because I wanted to harvest something for the for tests yep. in the Balak station, but yep. it didn't exist. So <laughs> yeah, so heat definitely has to stay. Lots of people use it. Um, Retina, are we done with that, Bob? That was an ARM signing workaround, right? As I recall, yeah. It doesn't do anything more than that. We didn't grow it, right? It was a kooky little thing because you had to sign ARM custom actions way back when, when ARM, not ARM64, old ARM, I don't know if it's ARM32, old, whatever. The old Windows ARM, RT. Windows RT, yes. Think the original Surface, the one that I don't think anybody except Microsoft employees got. Um, uh, well, not the original one, because remember, that was, the, that was the, the arcade game. Oh, right, the table. The table, yeah. Oh, sorry. The the uh, one of many I give up. I give up. One of the <laughs> early instances. Of <laughs> Microsoft <laughs> marketing wins yet again. Um, so the Surface RT, the the first tablet, which was an ARM machine that if you wanted to install ARM code on it, 
uh, you had to have it signed by a magic key from Microsoft. And so we didn't have that key to sign as part of Wix, but some people would need it, um, like <clears throat> the Visual Studio Debug Tools, I remember being one of them. So they had the magic Microsoft signing key, and they would take the custom actions, have to extract them from the 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 uh, extensions, the yeah, the Wix and the extensions, sign them, and then put it all back together. It wasn't a fun process, but it was never intended to be a fun process because the number of people that had these signing keys we expected to be able to be counted on one hand. Um, and lo and behold, it never went anywhere. Uh, neither did WinRT, which is part of the reason it never went anywhere. Um, the whole stack thing. So I think Retina is dead. Or no, I think that's, obsolete. that's fair. Yeah. Uh, obsolete to the extreme. Yep. Yep. Um, heat is not. So melt or smoke, which do you want to do first, Bob? Oh, let's tackle melt because it has the dual personality that we have to resolve. All right. So does melt have to live on? So two purposes to melt. One is the um, decompilation of merge modules to fragment authoring. So it's distinct from dark, which it isn't like on merge. the list, Oh, oh. oh but no. should be. No, dark is a decompile command in Sidewix.exe. Will be? Is? Is, is it? it? Maybe it's not? It's all wired in on the back end. Okay. So it might just be missing. I don't recall. <laughs> all right. All right we'll, we'll talk about dark. Last. Yes. Um, right. So, so decompiling a merge module via dark in V3 gives you Wix authoring that recreates a merge module. The, the first use of melt is to instead create a fragment that you can put it into a Wix lib, but that faithfully recreates the merge module, including the modularization goods oh. that get stuck on all the IDs. Right. Um, I have seen, uh, I've seen two groups use this functionality. They both are in Microsoft and they use it um, because they don't want to use merge modules, but they, have merge modules, and that's how they get certain components, and so they needed a, a workaround for this problem. Um, I'm completely comfortable in saying normal people don't need that functionality in Melt. Yeah, it's pretty... Okay. All right. The, the second feature of Melt that has no relation to the first, and I... I still I'm kind of angry at myself for putting it in melt um, is a feature I added a few years ago, a few, 10 years ago um, to let you take an MSI and a Wix PDB and extract the files from the MSI and update the PDB to match where those files were extracted. This is all uh, for use in patching. If you want to do pure PDB patching, and all you have is an MSI and the Wix PDB, you know, the typical outputs from a build, um, the second feature of Melt will let you um, do, continue to, to do pure PDB patching without having to create admin images, which even today still requires um, admin privileges, right? Um, and therefore it doesn't, you know, cooperate nicely with your typical build systems especially hosted CI and CD. Um, and it lets you use uh, PDBs for patching. Um, this is still a good feature, and I wonder if we still need it based on the work that you've done in Wix v4 for patching. Yeah, I think, I don't know if it, the, the part that's not complete in the patching that I've done thus far is the file resolution of uh, that's the last piece that I need to do, which is exactly, would touch exactly the scenario that you talked about. And I do have a scenario in there where it grabs the MSIs as inputs, not always Wix PDBs, as a way to try to say, hey, here can be your files. Um, get them from this MSI as well. Um, so I think the only thing I haven't worked out in that is 
if it's too slow pulling files out, like if it needs to, you know, cache them somewhere, which Melt would let you do a f ahead of time, right? You could. Well, yeah. So the, now the, <laughs> yeah, pluses and minuses. Melt always extracted all files from the MSI, even if they weren't going to be, even if the metadata was sufficient to say that they didn't need to be physically diffed, you know, bit by bit. Um, I suspect you could optimize that and, you know, say not pull it out. If the MSI file hash or file rows didn't change, you, you don't need to look at them. Yep. So um, that's, yeah, pluses and minuses. The downside is, yeah, I suspect it's going to be slower to do it one by one, but if you only need, you know, a small subset of files, it'll definitely end up being faster net. Okay, so the first part of this of converting a merge module into code for a Wixlib, and does it really create Kill a it. fragment? It doesn't create a Wixlib? It creates a uh, fragment. Yes. Yeah. It's it's very much like Dark in that respect. Yeah, it probably uses a lot of stuff that Dark used. Um, Not as much as you might think, but hmm. it does use the decompiler. Of course. Um, okay. So if we don't keep that, and then the other scenario is in uh, patching, and then mm -hmm. it's just a matter of the ability to ascend, may perhaps bring the ability to take out the files in bulk to essentially prepare a previous, the, the, the source image in a way that all the files are laying around, because you're going to do this often, because um, that's a performance win for you. Is something we could come back to, yeah. If we need to make that a separate tool, at, at that point it's an optimization. It so, is. Yeah, I'm I'm perfectly comfortable in, you know, pushing that from uh, immediate concern. Certainly okay. in in the dis decision of what do we do with melt. All right. So that means that melt doesn't live then. Yep. Um, just like retina. So then smoke. Smoke was the one on this list that I thought could most become a command in Wix. Sure, Wix validate. Yeah, yeah, static analysis, whatever you call it, Wix validate. Yeah. Yeah, and it needs to be a verb, right? Ideally, validate is better than. Yeah, it's like lint, but it's not lint. Oh, it's the right. Output, not the source code. Lint is yep. always on the source code. Yeah. Anyway. Analyze. Yes, analyze. Analyze. That's the source code. That's the replacement. Mm. That's the Wix cop replacement, right? Yes. Yeah. No. You're right. I agree. Okay. So I'm okay with analyze and, and uh, validate being pulled out and being smoke.exe. So smoke go is essentially becomes a command on Wix.exe. Yeah, that works. I think that's fine. Which then means heat is the only one standing. Which then means it can get its own repo, and that's very straightforward which was the thing that I had thrown out before, is that I was going to put heat in its own repo the way I did with Votive, and basically be like, here, it now lives and is out of the way of everything that is important. Um, so heat um, had its fingers in the extensions. Correct. It, all Are that those... stuff needs to get ripped out and just centralized okay. in heat. Like, okay. The idea of all, I mean, heat's just, it's just a mess, and I don't want to make it significantly better. I just want to contain it and put it in one place and leave it there. It's just such a pain. <laughs> so, um, yeah, just it's a matter of taking all the code out because it, it just never worked. It, nothing ever used that functionality. Right, right. And no, it, it was, spread it was the complexity cool. about hard. Yeah, it was a great idea, but yeah, no one, no one ever took advantage of it. Yeah, yeah, and it overcomplicated everything. So I, the my thinking has always been pull those stuff out, put them all in one heat repo, make heat self-contained, and there it is. Yeah. Good to go. Yeah. Well, the bulk of the bulk of the extensibility uh, or extensibility use of heat extensibility was in Wix util extension. And I always kind of, you know, tilted my head sideways and go and went, why isn't that core? That seems core to heat. Yeah. And again, understand the, the desires, but yeah. yeah, it definitely made Wix util extension tougher. Yes, and I think it will also fix one of the tendrils sticking out of the extensions. Yeah, um, yeah, that we can just cut out. Um, 
So I think that's the answer. Smoke becomes a command on Wix.exe, and I'm going to write that down because I think that's the first time I've heard both the words analyze and validate. I think that works really well. Um, for Wix cop and validate for smoke. Um, and that'll clean those up. Um, Melt and Retina don't need to be moved, and Heat needs to just be centralized in its one repo the same way that Motive was. Cool. That works. That works. Cool. All right. I did think this was going to be the easier conversation because I actually hoped that it went down that these things – this conversation went down exactly the way I hoped it would – um, and I knew that Bob would remember more of the details than I would on most of these tools. <laughs> so that's great. Plus, I like the fact that we now have verbs for analyze and validate, which I think we've been struggling with what to call Wixcop. And then suddenly, boof, you're right. It's analyze. Obviously. Analyze. Yeah. yeah. It's an analyzer. It's perfect. All right. Now, this one's going to be a harder conversation. What happened to Dark? Oh, Dark is decompile. Like, it's on Wix.exe. It, it's, if it's not there, it should be. Sorry. That's, that's not a <laughs> – It should be. Uh, I mean, if if you look around in there, it's obvious. No, I'm joking. Uh, I, I have put all the pieces in place that should basically be like, oh, look, I forgot to connect decompile together. And it's going to be like one snap, and it should be all put back together. Um, that doesn't mean that all the bugs are out of it, but it should just be like one click away from being correctly decompiling again. It's wider in the back what end. What it's worth, there is a stuff. decompile command. See, I told you, and if it doesn't work, then, I mean, it's just bugs at that point. <laughs> yeah. And are all the bundle features there, too? Uh-huh, they should be. I mean, my memory says they're all there. My memory's not great, given the amount of stuff that I put in between it and the last time I used it on this, which is the same problem I'm having with that thread, by the way, Sean, quick digression. You've been asked these questions about tuple names and typo definition names, and I'm just blanking, and I haven't had a chance to go look at the code to go, yes, what you're saying makes sense, or no, what you're saying doesn't make sense. And it's basically an if this or that, and I'm like, I don't know how to answer either of those. So I apologize for not answering. The reason is I have to go look at the code and I've not had a chance to go do that. Um, and then the answer is going to be, I expect, pretty obvious. Like, oh, yeah, clearly the answer is this. So I was trying to give you uh, tautologi tautological statements that were like, this is generally true and hopefully would lead you into the, well, then obviously this is the way the code should work. Um, and it didn't work. So I have to go make time to go look at the code. Um, all right. That's the end of that digression. That's why I haven't responded to your thread. I'm not ignoring you. Um, well, I am ignoring you, but not because I... It's a postponed to. It's a, yeah, it, it, it is. Uh, I'm, my list is really getting shorter. It really is. Um, but customers first, and that's what keeps dragging me back into a little bit overboard. All right. So now for potentially the harder conversation, but I'd be happy to be wrong. Uh, documentation in Wix v4. So a quick refresher on how this is done. Uh, there is a tool, a process in the chum folder that acquires all the XSDs, or knows where they're all at, or I guess they're all built, acquires the built XSDs um, as part of the build process, processes them into HTML, and then processes a whole bunch of other static content that we have, or, not, you know, uh, manual, uh, what do you call it that's written? Bob, content that's Pros. been written. What's that? Prose. Words Pros? rather than. Okay. Um, yeah. Prose that was written uh, in for a whole bunch of the other parts of the documentation. And then it stitches it all together and builds a chum. And it builds a whole bunch of web pages at the same time. And the chum is included in the setup. And the web pages are all packaged up and shipped off to uh, the web server as part of the build. And then they get put in their correct place as part of the web build. Um, and it's a two -step I remember process. just how complicated this was. Um, yeah. And it comes from the fact that, one, we build a chum, and two, we produce it from XSDs. Now, XSDs were somewhat interesting before because we kind of used them for validation, but not really. Um, we definitely don't use them for validation because they are freaking slow um, to do, and we have better error messages in our code anyway. Um, so we don't need the XSDs in the extensions or in Wix. Like, we don't use the Wix XSD or the extensions. 
the place that we do need them is in votive, and there is a copy of them in votive, which is honestly the source of truth for them for the install of votive, because they get carried there. They are not part of, they do not need to, I don't know if they are, but they need to be privatized into the private versions of Visual Studio. Um, so they don't, they are not installed, or they shouldn't be installed with Wix anymore. AKA the build tools do not carry the XSDs. So building the chum from the XSDs is a little bit odd now in that way. Um, updating the XSDs is a little bit odd. So anyway, we end up in this whole world of how do we want to do documentation for Wix? And do we just uh, abandon the chum file and centralize on a web repository for pros? and then tackle the XSDs? I guess that's the first question, which is my first bullet point here. Do we still produce a chunk, or do we abandon it? If it were zero cost, of course we should keep doing it. Yeah, but it's, it's doing bad things to us, and it also prevents our documentation from living well on the web. We routinely have people fixing the web page and not fixing the chunk. Yes. In fact, of course, that goes into your second question. Right. Um, but most people are, when they're fixing things, they're fixing like the pros, they're not fixing the XSD content. So far, most of the problems we've had are people trying to fix the pros or add to the pros, not fix the XSD content for whatever reason that is. I don't know why, um, why people don't want to contribute to the part that is generated by XSD. So, yeah. <laughs> the, so I think the primary issue is that the chum, and this goes back to Wix 2, because it was one of the first things I worked on in Wix, the chum is the first class citizen. Yes, that's correct. And we generate the, the web from that. Correct. And it, at the very least, should be the other way around. Okay, because well, that's true. The, okay, I'm I'm fine with that. Then if we take that to be self-evident or to be true that's fine okay great let's let's take that as a starting point sean you okay with that like do you want to fight yeah. tooth and nail for the chum no. all right yeah no. I, I mean i don't know anybody that still ships a chum certainly not as a thing that people say oh yeah where's the help file the answer is uh why can't i find it in the web in in google <laughs> all right so then the next question is what do we want to do with xsds um kill them kill them yeah. Well, we can but, for votive. But I mean, that's how they, that's how that all the, you know, the schema documentation, like, if you want to figure out what attributes are in what element. Yeah. Are you but, really going to go into IntelliSense for that? Yeah, well, it's the IntelliSense that you'd lose then. I don't know that you can kill them. So, yes, we can. We can kill them for for documentation. Oh, true. Is what I'm suggesting. Um, but, but the documentation race, does show up in IntelliSense. Sorry. We can kill the XSDs as a source of truth for the reference pages. Okay. Um, that we still need the XSDs for IntelliSense, and we want document, you know, reasonable documentation in that IntelliSense means that we shouldn't just kill them. Um, but But the truth is, the, the the truth is there's actually very little value from um sorry let me let me back up um if we didn't need xsds there'd be so little value in using them as a source of truth for documentation that you know, it's it, it's ridiculous the the xsd to chum um tool doesn't do much no, doesn't that's true. you know it doesn't automate much. It does a few things, some of which I wrote. So, you know, it must have been really important at the time. Um, but, you know, it's like, yeah, we already have to essentially ignore the XSD when we write the compiler. So, you know, it would not take significant effort to, you know, create a set of static files once and maintain those. That said, we still need the XSDs, so ignore what I just said. <laughs> okay. Given 
so what we don't want is to have multiple sources of truth. Okay. Um, given that we want XSDs, assuming that we want the documentation, you know, the reference documentation um, to be uh, the same or, you know, uh, let's say the same um, in IntelliSense as you get on the web, which I think is reasonable, then it doesn't make sense to, you know, to do it twice. So, so therefore, XSDs are, you know, still the right way to go for reference. All right. So let me ask. Let me ask this question. Um, let's say we had a a. I don't know if we have a documentation project or we just make it part of the web. Um, and the. Would you write the XSDs in XSD format, or would you write them in another format? And would you generate the XSDs, or would you write documentation in the XSDs? I guess that's my question. I, I like I don't have another yeah. form off the top of my head that would generate a full-fledged well, XSD it, correctly. Um, right. Where XSD is XML, and you're like, yeah, we could. I mean, as you said, XSD to HTML is relatively trivial. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so this is the other reason I, I don't care about XSDs other than for IntelliSense. They're a pain to work with. Um, yeah, and certainly the Wix XSDs are, um, they contain way more markup than than text. Yeah, the, 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 the signal to angle bracket noise ratio is, is not great. Um, and, and this is where, you know, I would say, ooh, wouldn't it be neat if we could, you know, do something with C sharp dot comments right. and tie it all together because, you know, elements are close to classes and attributes are close to properties. I don't um, know how to do that. I don't either. Um and and uh, you know, it would require extra work to get all of the the stuff that we need for an actual XSD schema. So yeah. Um, I, I would certainly, yeah, you know, it might be worth looking at, you know, a half hour brainstorming session of, can we come up with a, a schema that's simpler than XSD uh, and, and, you know, easily convertible to that. A higher language than Yeah. XSD. Yeah. Even if it's also XML, which but would be fine. Go to both XSD and to documentation well. Right. That's that's an interesting idea. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, what's? I I guess I didn't realize there was something wrong with XSDs today. I mean, they're already written, so. Yeah. And I'm well, confused the time changing formats. They're they're written. Um, it's not clear to me that they're current. Not clear to me that they're up to date. So, you know, we're going to have to do some digging there. Um, uh, why wouldn't they be up to date? Because I think we've made some changes in the language that aren't reflected in the XSD. It's very I know I didn't do it. So, yeah. which is, yeah. I guess, part of my part of my thing is it, it, it's we, we have to figure out how we do this so that this stuff stays up to date. Um, I've been thinking about this, and because we're not using the XSDs in the compiler, I think the only thing we can do is to treat it as a documentation effort, unless we find a way of generating this stuff from code, which I don't think we're going to get away with XML doc comments to generate our Wix language XSD. Um, we're going to have to just maintain the documentation separate from the compiler. I don't know any way of solving that. Um, yeah, no. Which means that I don't, I don't know one either. Yeah, and I also think that means that, you know, as the compiler changes, we've we've had to do this, but we haven't done a good job of it where this element is only available in version, you know, whatever, whatever. Um, oh, for sure. That will continue to be, you know, things that we have to write, but that's still a documentation thing. Um, okay, so one idea then is, and I, I don't know if we put it in the web project or in a documentation project, project that the web project pulls in, we can decide that later. Um, or, heck, the, I guess the documentation project could just upload its output to the appropriate place in the web. I mean, those are all different options. Let's say there's a separate documentation project just for now. Sure. 
although honestly people are going to go to the web and be able to say click here and edit it. Um, Thing. All right, so then that would mean that the documentation project would produce the XSDs, would be the, the pr whether, however it produced it, whether they're just the files and the copy, it is a thing that pr provides the XSDs for the, rest of the, for the rest of downstream. It is a source of truth for the XSDs as an yeah, output. I think that's reasonable. All right, so that means that... Because again, it's documentation, and that's IntelliSense in a nutshell. Right. That, that's all they're used for. Yeah. That means that Votive should get the XSDs, the Votive project should get the XSDs from the documentation output. Yep. Which will fix that problem, which has actually been a problem for me a lot today. This actually solves a lot of problems. We're actually going to end up in a better spot than I thought we would. Um, documentation is going to be centralized in a documentation place, whether it's in the web repo or documentation repo, we can talk about that. Um, all the XSDs move there. They are treated as documentation. It does have the downside that if you fix, change an attribute in an extension or the compiler, you have to go to the doc project and update it. Um, but that, just have to update the documentation to the changes you made. And then Votive will get the updates to any XSDs downstream from that without having to go and update the Votive project. My fear was that Votive was going to become an upstream of the documentation project, which I did not want. I did not no, want to be going no, on Votive no, all the time not. producing documentation. All right. right. And that actually works given the changes I made to Votive a long while ago to separate the doc, the XSDs from the Votive v6 itself so you can get the v6, the schemas v6 by themselves. Right. So that may work out really, really well. Oh, because you could even have the v6 created in the doc project. Right. I'm not saying we should, but right, it's certainly right. an option um, yep. to be able to do that and say, here is this version of the schemas um, inside whatever version of Votive, if that has value. Um, and if it doesn't, then we'll just ship the, X, the XSDs as a, I don't know, whatever, a NuGet, because we can, and we'll have Votive pull the content NuGet right. into its content and ship the latest whatever NuGet. Yep. So that'll be fine, too. Okay. So then the only question after that really is, is there a doc project or is it part of the web project? I like the idea of creating a doc pro oh my god, I'm 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 the one recommending another micro repo. It's gonna turn into a sub module of the web project. <laughs> or sub modules? Oh never mind then. Um or oh, I guess we off. could publish it. well, I don't know, it depends on I don't know. However we want to publish the content over. We just have to get the links from the website to say, if you want to edit this page, go over here to do so. Yeah, that's the disadvantage of a separate doc project. Um, I guess I was I was leaning toward a doc project because um, it it would make it it's all I guess semantics. It would make it easier if we did at some point want to do a chum. Um, it makes more sense in a doc project than a web project. Um, And I guess it, it, and this is just, you know, this is just, 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 you know, really nitpicky stuff. The having the, the votive project consume the web project also feels weird. That does feel weird. I agree with that. So right. since the web project can update a lot faster than the doc project even might. Um, uh, true. Yeah. Yeah. Cause lots, lots of stuff shows up. Yeah. The web the website. It, it aggregates all these different things, particularly right. like releases right. and things like yeah. that. All right. Uh, we don't have to decide that right now, but this is a direction to go. This does solve some nice problems of, all right, we now know where XSDs live. Um, they are documentation, whether we generate them from a higher level language or we just use the XSDs as Sean suggested, um, and we generate one set of output. The output is uh, targeted to the web, and if a chum comes along for free or not too much more effort after that, so be it. But the primary goal is the web instead of the other way around, which is not yeah. that good. Um, part of the problem on the web, though I've never come up with a great solution without really sitting down for, is that we do not have a good table of contents when you're on the web because we yeah. lean on the chum, and the chum has a table of contents, but it's in the table right. of, in the chum format, which doesn't help you when you're on the web. So that'll yep. be an important thing to fix. 
Um, okay, so if we do that, then that is the Chum project. That's actually not bad. We have a couple good sized decisions to make on whether it's in web or a separate project. Um, I guess we, um, one option would be to host it at a different namespace than wixtoolset.org, like doc.wixtoolset.org. Then the doc documentation project could just be that entire web node would be one way of doing it. I don't know if that's a good idea or not. Um, it's possible also, you know, we probably could also change the doc project to just publish into the doc or the manual, I guess is the name of it, node on the website too. I can look at that as well. Oh, so on um, the web project would be empty there. The web right. The web project would not be responsible for handling that. The documentation project would be responsible for posting that right. content. That's interesting. Um, but that's the mechanics of getting the docs into the website, right? One way or another. Um, one thing, and also something we can probably uh, postpone. Um, how do we want to handle V3 versus V4 for Doc? I I, I didn't think we were going to do a lot, and we were just going to put a Wix3 in the URL and a Wix4 in the URL and carry it on for now. Okay. I mean, that's sure. I, I don't I, – and try to do something very clear at the top of 4 or – Maybe do an update in Wix 3.14 to push the documentation to make it clear at the top of every doc page that this is Wix 3 documentation, um, and that uh, then Wix 4 some, is very clear. Wix 4. Some, yeah, I was I was considering um, um, Python has this issue. Um, oh yeah, they have uh, their documentation arranged by major dot minor. Um, something we did not do in Wix during the Wix 3 lifetime, right. so it would be hard to pull off now, um, but it helps solve, uh, somewhat solve the problem of needing to tag everything with its with its release. But don't search engines? This yeah. is a significant problem, yes. yes. And it's but, a problem we're going to have with Wix as well. Yeah. I mean, ASP. Dot, or ASP uh, uh, MSDN, I see it on ASP.core a lot, uh, but MSDN has a little drop down on the left yeah. that you drop yeah. thing down and it changes the content um, yep. for the thing that you're looking at, um, which is cool, but requires a lot more work. Yeah, but it's okay. I know someone who's been doing a lot of front end web front end yeah. web dev yeah. really. It's <laughs> not even not even that. It's the getting the data together. Yeah. Yeah matching the things together. It's like, oh, such a not fun project. Well, but this is one of the things where, where the chum actually simplified things quite a bit because the chum had no no um, Chrome, essentially. Mm -hmm. You know, it was just, it was basically just the content of the page. Whereas the website build, it adds a bunch of stuff around the edges of the content. Um, and that, you know, makes it tougher to get just the raw data out. It makes it tougher to generate because you also have to figure out how you generate all the, the bling. Yeah, I don't know. The template system that we're using works. So. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. All right. Net, net, though, I feel better about documentation parts than I did in the past. I don't, I think chums are Probably a thing of the past for quite a while, or quite soon. Um, so, for those of you that mourn such a thing, uh, sorry. Raising hand. <laughs> yeah, um, we'll go from there. Any other thoughts, Sean? No, I was going to ask the same V3, V4 question that Bob did. So that's yeah. So much I, it. I actually think I'm going to look real quick. Actually, I can bring it up in this thing because I think. Go over here. And we go to documentation and we go to uh, the reference bank. See, it already has a V3 in it. I thought so. So the URLs are actually okay already. 
although it's down pretty far. We can't we can't actually see it. You can't. Oh, you can't. <laughs> uh, I apparently Queen. chopped off the URL. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, trust me, it's there. Uh, no, anyway. Um, if you go to this page, then it's there. That's weird. I guess. Yeah, I guess I. Had to, sorry. This page on the documentation. Um, it does say Wix toolset.org documentation manual v3. Okay. So it'd been better if it was documentation v3 manual, but whatever. I guess it could be Wix toolset v3 documentation, but um, anyway, we already have a v3 in there now, so we could put a v4 in there somewhere, and it would work out. Cool. Cool. Then we. I, I agree. I like the idea of of having some way to easily switch to the same page on a different version. Mm, okay. Which might be as simple as replacing the three with the four. Yep. And if it's not, um, we can provide a manual link if you yeah, have to override yeah. it for some reason. Yeah. Right. And I think that would also help with um, uh, getting V4 up the, the ranking. Yeah, I've been thinking of doing I don't know if this is evil or not, but essentially going back to V3 and adding canonical links to the V4 documentation. They saying this is here, but the canonical version is over there. I, I would I might say latest rather than canonical, but well, no, it's canonical is a search concept of you. You tell Google, yeah, here, I'm I'm a mirror of this over there. The real one is over there and then provide, like you said, a link from V4 back to V3. So basically telling the web browsers as they find all this content that is essentially duplicated, because the grand majority of it's duplicated because the elements haven't changed that much. Right. Um, that you're, this you're talking one about, is the, You're talking about meta stuff, not actual yes, sorry, A-links. Meta. It is a meta concept in the search engine where you declare okay. uh, the canonical. This, this is duplicate content. The canonical one's over there. Um, go to it. Yeah, yeah. I did this for um, error code, um, where if you've seen error code, let me see if I can go find it. Um, error. We were just talking about this, but like, uh, let's go to five, access denied, right? Five, please, like a type. Um, so here it is. This, These pseudo, these other error codes, which is in hex and then the negative hex number, this is, you know, it tells you here, hey, this is actually win error five, um, this big error number. This has a canonical setting on it saying, look, you can find this one, but the real information is over on this one. This is the main page for all things related to this error code and that error code. So it ends up tying them together in search engines so that they know, hey, yeah, this access denied and error access denied text that you keep putting around is duplicated on your website. You're trying to spam us and try to steal the word error access denied, which is the fear. Right, you can say, no, 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 really, they're all just this in different formats. Um, anyway, it solves a search. It's an SEO problem. Right, right. Yeah, Python does something similar. They point from their uh, their uh, dot .minor releases mm-hmm. um, to the major release. So you can go to like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. docs.python.org slash 2.3. Seven mm-hmm. or whatever, and they have a canonical uh, link to two. two. Yep, that makes sense. And they also do the drop downs. And they do the drop downs, yeah. Okay. Which is interesting. Yep. All right. Well, I look forward to the point when we have all the content out there and we're thinking, wow, how do we make this uh, this drop down or something like that? Right. <laughs> like, that's the problem that we're solving. Yeah. Sean's just sitting here going, freaking, we don't have any V4 documentation at all. Other things people want to talk about, comments, stuff going on, things going on in the outside world. Anything? All right, pretty quiet. Um, this time slot is still working. Sean sounds bright-eyed and bushy-tailed for us today, um, even though it's, I don't know, what, 7.30? Or I guess it's 8.30 now. Almost, right? Yeah, that, we right? started at 8.30. It's almost 9.30. Almost, oh, we started at 8.30. It's almost 9.30. Wow. Can't do math on stream. Don't do that. Um, uh, yeah, so that's good. Okay. Um, 
This seems to be working right now. Don't know if we've had many people complaining. Um, it says we have three viewers. I don't know if that's you two guys or what, but uh, to all three of you out there watching us right now, that's great. To all of you that watch us on YouTube, uh, thanks. I know the time that we record this matters a lot less to you people. Uh, we'll be back in two weeks. That would be the last uh, Wednesday in April. Sounds good, guys? Yes? Thanks for me. Mm -hmm. All right. So two weeks from now, same time, uh, same place. And uh, till then, you guys take it easy, and hopefully Visual Studio has a good couple weeks. Bye now. Bye. Bye.